NPC theory correct? Big portion of world population unsavable? This might come off as another black pill threat, but think about NPC meme slash theory. What if what the KGB agent said in interview is true? That once the population has been demoralized through falsehoods as far back as from early childhood, from schools, how their parents have been brainwashed. The parents teach falsehoods to their children. Once they've done all of that to a person, it no longer matters if you show any truth to a person. According to the ex-KGB agent, whom got assassinated in the US eventually, maybe stepped out of line. According to him, once someone has been demoralized completely, no matter how much you bombard them with the truth and true information, that person cannot be converted back. You saw how many of the sheep conform to everything that the government asked of, despite the likes of WEF and Bill Gates saying, we don't need so many people, and Gates openly hinting that they can control birth rates. I wish it wasn't so, that the MPC folk could be saved. But what if they cannot be? Should we drag the rest of what remains of the light and hope of this race to the bottom in an attempt to try and salvage something that cannot be salvaged? What if the whole reason of all of this suffering on earth is to get rid of the bad weeds, so the good weeds get to enter a different realm, a realm of light? But for that to happen, those that are completely lost have to be gotten rid of first. Those whom cannot be convinced under any circumstances in their entire fucking lifetime that the entire life that they're living is a lie, these fucking imbeciles keep the new Babylonian slave empire's gears running. It just feels so frustrating when you try to put big effort to getting to a person, for them to give you that fluoride stare sort of reaction. I used to think that maybe severe enough trauma in life would wake them up, like a passing in the family or that of a close friend, but no, that does not seem to be the case. It would seem that just like with any other person, the programming slash brainwashing becomes part of that person's identity, which the ego will then defend. We are all guilty of this to a degree, but it's basically inorganic thoughts and ideas being defended by your own sense of identity. This is why MK Ultra programming in general works, because you have to break the person's inner defense system before you can implant thoughts in there that are so outlandish that would not get there by any other natural way. It's probably not as extreme with propaganda and the falsehoods that the brainwashed parents and school institutes teach to their children and students, but the principal concept is the same. In school, it's done under peer pressure. There are different hierarchies and there is gatekeeping, and so you cannot climb in the hierarchy. Reminds me of Freemasonry, where you have to do humiliation rituals of sorts if you want to be accepted within the circles. In home, the dynamic is that the kid has to respect the parents because they not only provide you a home and security, but also the love you need to grow. So everything they say, you have to assume is correct. Thus, if the parents were brainwashed before by their own parents, whom suffered trauma in World War II, who were even easier to brainwash, then the kids are very susceptible to falsehoods that their parents teach, provided that the kid happens to respect their parents. It's no matter really, because despite if the kid ends up rebelling against their parents, they will be brainwashed in schools and friend circles eventually, so the end goal is the same. Get the population of people to act and behave in the same way. Do not question the authority or those in power and their motives. Basically, you have to stop thinking with your own brains if you want to fit in to the societal mold, to get good education, and to thrive in the work environment with your co-workers. I know this sounds dumb and looking for nostalgia, but if you look at old art, be it music or games, I say that they have more soul than their modern counterpart, and I think it's precisely because back then, people weren't as brainwashed as they are today. People still could look within and do the work with their soul, and that inner work could then be poured into the stuff that they did. Be it work itself, be it any work, maybe even kitchen chef or good food, is truly labor of love and inner spirit. Or more directly, I think it's prominently seen art. I argue the modern art tries to be very formulaic and calculative with all kinds of different algorithms and structures, when old art was more brazen, courageous, risk-taking. Old 60s to 70s music did not have song structures that we have now in our modern music. In general though, I find it weird that there is this pattern of trying to dilute the taste for quality of the population. If we get a big number of people to agree that literal fucking shit 
not only is edible and good, then surely those who question such opinion must be in the wrong. I think this is what's happened specifically with gaming. When people could before see that X game is good, when nowadays you have mindless adults paying money for skins and loot boxes on kid games like Fortnite because they either don't have the memory of what 64 player Battlefield 2 server would be like or they've been demoralized so thoroughly that they simply do not care if what they're consuming is ultimately shit. You could say I've become jaded and that I'm viewing all of this from very strongly tinted glasses, but even if that is true, that still does not explain why there are still patterns, why they exist, why there seems to be a thread of truth that this world has been on a steady downward spiral, why we've been in a spiritual war ever since the end of World War II, how nobody seems to know about it. You can't talk about this without getting crazy label. How can you save NPCs? Maybe you can't. Economies wouldn't work if there weren't NPCs. There would be no drones to do the office jobs, birth the babies, and buy the pointless garbage that we sell. Not only are there NPCs, there are aggressive NPCs that attack anything with a soul and see it as a threat to them. I have personally witnessed them picking me out of a crowd as if they were scanning me for commonly held group opinions. It's like their alarm bells go off if they spot a deviant and spiral into hysterical panic. It's literally like they see a soul inside of me and think that such things should not exist, like how ghosts shouldn't exist. It's correct, but it doesn't name the root of this issue. Humanity has been subjugated through powerful combination of contract and soul magic that binds their souls at birth with intention of claiming them later if they do not break the spell over the lifetime. Praying to God, Jesus, or any other entity does not help because forces of good do not cure ignorance. The Maritime Admiralty Law is in actuality a powerful contract magic that binds you to slavery due to your parents' ignorance. If you do not reclaim your freedom by terminating this contract over the lifetime, the moment you die will be the moment that you are claimed by whatever entity employs this pyramid scheme. Some say it's Dagon the Fish God, others say it's something else entirely. These souls are then removed from rebirth pool and are imprisoned in an eternal sleep state. And while that happens, the entities draw out humanity's power. To all of you sad idiots bashing on how do I sell my soul to Satan and all that degenerate satanic bullshit, you can't even do that properly because the rights to your soul, if not reclaimed, are owned by another entity who then trades with Satan for the majority of the benefit while you get breadcrumbs. Now, I'm not saying sell your soul because that's a raw and stupid deal. I'm just using it as an easy example. In essence, with each generation under this bullshit, and it realistically started from the day that we started writing birth certificates, there will be less and less actual souls, and more and more replacement NPC souls. The NPC issue was never there before this fraud was placed on humanity, via Maritime Admiralty Law. Welcome to the real world, you know it's true deep down. According to Ospensky in the fourth way, Gurdjieff said everyone is capable of reaching higher states of consciousness, but because most people need a guiding source of truth in collaboration with supportive, like-minded individuals to even achieve basic self-awareness, it's not currently possible to free everyone. He uses the metaphor of escaping from prison, wherein one needs both help on the inside and aid from without. Invent the NPC theory. Everyone believes that they aren't an NPC. Everyone is an NPC except me and my friend's mentality rises. You can't trust the NPC's mentality follows. The people do not mob together because they believe most of the mob would be NPCs. The people broken into small groups believing every one of us except us are the NPCs are weak and non-threatening to the rulers. Simple as. Except that 80% of people are literal NPCs who have no idea how hard they're getting fucked and are unable to wake up from the programming, while a sizable minority of people, despite experiencing the same shit, somehow manage to awaken, it's because one of those groups have a soul, and the other does not. I don't think anyone is an NPC, but that humans are a hive mind, and brainwashing runs so deeply into the human psyche, that they are programmed like Neo, until he gets his first red pill, then everything crashes down. Source was once someone who would have been considered a political NPC but woke up, realizing no one at the top knows anything, 
and they're all under the control of rich billionaires, who are surrounded by terrified, lackey yes-men, while their own sanity slips into crazy town after they spend their lives terrified of the general public and their own shadow. So, those are the people making decisions for the entire world right now. The movie Don't Look Up is borderline prophecy. Very interested in this, especially after reading Wikipedia downplaying this theory. There's entire bloodlines that owe souls, and bloodlines getting the last bit of their soul squeezed out like a piffy orange. The origin of the maritime law conspiracy theory is unknown, though it may stem from a misunderstanding of some nautical sounding words in common usage in the English language judiciary, such as ownership, citizenship, doc, or birth certificate. This theory is entirely devoid of merit when invoked by litigants. It has been consistently dismissed as frivolous. That's because it's a bullshit law. If they didn't need consent over our free will, they would not bother to go through with all of this deception. Under no circumstances must it be known that there are foreign forces orchestrating the show here on Earth. Why is that when they have such superior technology? Why go through trying to create a hive mind? with deceptive tricks, where the individuals stay conscious, instead of doing it by force, hmm? They obviously need us, as a collective, to manifest things for them. Our every soul is an individual, capable of manifestation, but in group, it becomes that much more potent. But the magic does not work if the people, we, know that we're being tricked to do this stuff. I really believe this. How do we break soul contracts? What would you recommend? At its core, you must break all contracts you have with the system, which means driver's license, Netflix sub, internet, etc. You also reclaim crucial documents from the state, which is the birth certificate. Birth certificate is important, because it is the soles of your feet used as a stamp, which is a form of agreement, aka binding contract. You were a baby back then, so you could have not agreed to this, but your mom did unknowingly, and sold you to the slave complex. But don't hate her, she was ignorant and was most likely sold by her own mother, who did not know anything either. When she agreed on your behalf, they used your foot as a stamp to seal the deal, and this is what legally and esoterically binds you. Once this is done, you have a choice to make. Do you want to be part of the system still, or do you want to leave it? Maybe you want to help others by dropping truth bombs, then it's better to be part of the system. In that case, you must declare yourself as an adult or sovereign, since anyone who does not is viewed as a child, and children have no rights. Their rights are in the hands of those who own them, which is state, and not your mother slash dad, since they sold you via that stamp. Once you are declared sovereign, you're a non-corporate entity, on same line as the hidden elite. Yeah, you don't have their influence or money, but you are technically their equal, and law enforcement cannot fuck with you, and even if they do, the courts can't get you. Here are a few movies to watch to better understand this fraud. The Sui Pinial, Jesus I Am Alive, brief history and a nice gestalt of what's going on. Not big on esoteric approach, but big from law side. Ungrip, about a dude who left the system and is now free. Once you learn this, you can start researching the esoteric side of a deep rabbit hole. If you want to take your time, write a will where. Do keep in mind that it's still an evil satanic system. You can be free and still get killed by ignorant torpedoes that they employ, that they will later sacrifice. The important part is that your soul will be free and unchained from this insane slavery that the world is sleeping on. Also, I have read that you can technically write a will that can terminate all contracts and declare yourself an adult, which is something that may be beneficial to write as you try to go through with this. How many people have written on their wills that they reject the system and terminate all the contracts that they have with it? Makes sense, but do more research on it. I'd love to drop more channels and videos on this, but this is a glowy den. Seek and you will find. I do believe it's possible for even people who have been brainwashed at birth to break programming, as I've seen it happen to those close to me. However, I do believe some people are unsavable, as some will always value social conformity at the expense of self-preservation, because that is simply how they are made. In other words, some people are born as NPCs, and that is just their lot in life. It's a waste of time to have meaningful discussion with these sorts, because they are not interested in waking up to begin with. It doesn't matter to them how much of their worldview is composed of lies, 
because the truth would disturb their comfort. In fact, lies are extremely preferable to them, especially if it gives them more reason to keep their head down and never change. It doesn't really matter what the current social or political climate is. There will always be NPCs. Though NPCs can be frustrating, their issue is predominantly with the media bent on programming them and less about their zombie-like state as they do not have agency to begin with. The NPCs just need proper programming in order to act better, which will inevitably change as culture changes. Getting mad at an NPC for acting like an NPC is like getting mad at a dog for not being able to properly sit at a table like a human. The NPC cannot act beyond what he is capable of, just as a dog cannot be anything more than a dog. I feel like we've come to very similar conclusions about things, because I think that the soullessness of modern media is very important. It reflects the way that people think nowadays. Things that are soulless are insincerely designed, whereas things with soul are sincerely designed. Everyone is conditioned from birth to repress their emotions and desires. Think about the common, your childish argument among soulless people. Men are particularly affected by this, which is why they are usually so bad at talking to people. It is very, very strongly reinforced that they should never act on their emotions and should heavily monitor their speech. Examples of this conditioning are the heavy focus on making children obedient and preventing them from interacting with their environment. Use your words is soul-destroying parenting. Parents are complicit in this because they themselves are slaves and would be inconvenienced if their child was to act on their natural good desires by not going to slave school and not acting like a slave around other people. Everyone imitates media because it's very hard not to. Media is what replaces our natural behavior because people who have no confidence in themselves are more comfortable imitating behaviors from other people than expressing their own behavior. Behaviors in media are weird, mean, and perverted, and you can see children who are otherwise very forgiving of people who aren't ugly beginning to be unnaturally mean to each other around the age when they and their classmates begin consuming media. I think modern children are less mean now because the media they consume isn't as mean, but the behavior they are imitating is bizarre in other ways. As a general magical trend, the world is slowly becoming lamer and more artificial with every year. This cannot go on forever because it is inefficient and stupid. The things which people mock each other for are the same things that we find most appealing in each other. Behaviors are cute or funny when they reflect the soul. In a person you like, desiring something is cute, making an honest mistake is cute, eating is cute, and them talking about something that they love is cute. It's funny when a toddler makes a mistake while speaking, not because we think they're an idiot, but because they are sincerely expressing their soul. However, because adults rarely experience these soulful behaviors, which should just be natural, they overreact around children who exhibit them by laughing, staring, making comments as though the children are idiots, and worst of all, taking photographs or videos of their children. This is very soulless behavior, and it's humiliating for children, and so contributes to a child's growing notion that they need to repress the exhibition of their soul. Personally, I think the NPC is somewhere on a spectrum of mental capacity, some being higher than others naturally, but it is diminished over time by this world and brainwashing, food, chemicals, etc. This means people who were naturally low on the spectrum from birth may completely lose the gifts over time, because they were already weak in the first place, but people who were naturally higher on the spectrum still retain some. That's just my theory. Fred was about good topics, now it's about Post these powerful organizations your power level and how you do not want to be a slave, trying to reinforce the idea that you are a slave when you never really were one, and it's all just a psyop to get you more stuck. These contracts mean jack shit. They're only meant to deceive you, to think they do, and it seems to be working since a lot of these glowies are posting ways to null these contracts. If you have to go through the effort of trying to null the value of toilet paper, you only make it more valuable and give it value that was never there. That's why fiat system works by the way. It's got no value until enough people are deceived to give it value. Do you have original ideas or thoughts? Is anything new and completely original in your memory? Probably not, because our memories are collective experiences over time. As individuals have their own experience, there is also a collective experience which is shared. NPCs evolve to their collective experience to fit in, i.e. 
if you don't conform and take an abnormal approach to society, then you have difficulties fitting in and enjoying your experience. There are all these supposed restrictions to enjoying your experience in time. The basics like food, shelter, etc. and also more complex, like feelings of belonging and purpose in a social group or society. This is where most of the NPC clone conformity happens, out of a need to fit in and have meaning and be happy with friends, as the force for conformity and groupthink naturally. This is happening on a larger scale in modern society, as there is more upwards pressure for conformity because individuals are more isolated, so greater general conformity is needed. Also because of the breakdown of family. There has always been society pressure to conform to do business, and basic governance structures promote a functioning society. You know, basic rules on how to function and treat each other for business and pleasure. The good news is that 83% of clones that are out there will change easily once the herd changes in direction. The herd is the herd, it always will be. Can all be black sheep for the general functioning of your experience. We are all playing our part in developing an experience. We are all the actors that play an evolving part in an experience. You have an important part, especially if you're not an NPC and believe in yourself. In a video, can an NPC glitch and have its own experience in the game? Are you having your own experience of life? The only ones thinking most are actual NPCs are anti-social morons that don't even know how to interact with someone. My GF will be seen as an NPC by most of you. She has her own opinions. She has the ability for abstract thought. They are just as human as you and me. They just prefer the comfort of society as it is, and are just living life and trying to be happy. It's easier on the mind to trust your government and not get depressed about where we are and where we're going. Stop dehumanizing others, you tool. You are not better than others just because you have an inkling of an idea as to what is going on here. Not that anon, but she has her own opinions, just prefers the comfort of society. Okay. So society told her to kill her babies under the threat of a global warming or something, would she do it? We've been under spiritual war ever since the end of World War II. The war never really ended, so this shit you're claiming that normies just pretend to be stupid is BS. Inaction when your values, your genes, your family, and your very own soul is under attack is cowardice, and at worst, it's defector of human race. It's like your GF suffers from narcissism, and you probably do too anon. Keep in mind, we are a product of our past and the culture we were immersed in. You have NPC thoughts hard-coded inside you, and you don't even know it. Yes, this stuff with ego and identity is a really hard topic for me. There is so much intelligence interest related to it. They wish everyone was the same, so having a stubborn head is helpful. However, if you're too stubborn and end up isolating yourself or closing your heart, the time here on Earth is not going to be a fun one. There must be some fine balance to walk, but I certainly have not found it. The problem is precisely the traumas and old habits that need to be recoded and reprogrammed, but it should be done by you, or in my case me. But I fear there exist traps that may take the person to wrong path. For instance, I have hard time trusting hemi-sync tapes to only bring positive change. I feel there's no telling what over-programming might occur from listening to them. From threads I've read here, even meditation seem to carry the risk, but I guess you have to try and find something that works, because being too closed is not good either. It's just so hard to navigate through life with all of this. I've torn through layers of programming in order to interact correctly with a close friend who is completely gone. I watched his brain shift between different suppressive talking techniques to counter my topic, and only after tearing through them did the person in question even acknowledge that I had an argument. And even then, when I finally found his true opinion, it was, if some good people exist within an organization, then evil people will always lose. I wonder how many people actually believe that, because for me, that was as far as I made it in my attempt to deprogram him, as I could bring myself to inflict damage on his true beliefs, but the entire worldview is based on this, the good guys win no matter what mentality, most likely from movies, which is so fragile and wrong that their entire world would shatter if it was proven wrong. That's interesting you mention Anon. I think this might be by choice or design. The Masons believe Antichrist to be their hero. Every time there is hero's journey, like Luke Skywalker in old Star Wars trilogy. 
That person is always viewed to be Antichrist by the Masons. Maybe they want to create the expectations of hero for the masses through media and movies so that when such a person is introduced in real life, be it Trump, Biden, Obama or Musk, the said person will be able to deceive the masses. They will, no way Trump did that, no way Musk is evil, when they were playing along with TBTB slash Masons from the beginning, playing the role of Antichrist set to them. I think this is why the idea good will always prevail is created for people, so that they will not only never take responsibility on their own and stand up, but also because it can be used for deception. I imagine you can rotate quite many Antichrist politicians before a normie would even start wondering, wait a minute, why should I even vote if they all tell BS lies to me? And at that point is when they reset people somehow, either with some shock ritual or some new war. They can continue a never-ending cycle of next guy will be good, with the trope of a hero will eventually arrive that they've managed to sell to the public. Well friends, how's it going? Did this guy really just say unsubscribe from Netflix and you'll be free? <laughs> well, we know what the problem is. Unsub from Netflix and GG. Easy, easy mode life. Hell yeah. Wait. 